Okay, so BuildShip is a really flexible platform. And in the previous video, we had this very, very simple workflow set up where on the actual trigger itself, if we edit, we set up these particular parameters that we're gonna pass in as part of the body into the actual trigger. Now, if you do not know, or you are not sure at any particular point what those values are coming into the actual trigger itself, we can make some changes. We can delete these out of here and we can reference the body in a slightly different way elsewhere. So all I need to do is come in here. I'm going to delete these out here like that. So I'm not going to specify those. I'm going to hit save. Now, if I now go into the actual node itself, you can see here, now we've got some errors where it can't find what we set up previously. But what we can do is just delete this out here. We can go back to variables. We can go to the request itself. We can then select body, which is an object in its own right. And we can just put a full stop on after here and just put number one, just like that, click away. I'll do the same thing for operation as well. I'm just gonna delete that out of here, go to the variables, go to the request. I'm gonna say body, and I'm just gonna say then operation like that, get rid of the S, there we go. And then on the second number, we just need to simply do exactly the same thing again. So go to the variables, go to then the request, go to the body itself. And then of course, I'm just gonna say number two like that. So all I need to do now is test this particular workflow. Um, I just pass in the body and we did before hit the, uh, the, the actual building. So it's gonna treat the kind of the input as an object in its own right. We have no idea what we're passing in, but we can pick those up, obviously, then with inside the actual nodes themselves. So I just wanted to kind of demonstrate this as an alternative option for you. You don't have to specify each and individual input value. If you if you have a large data block that's kind of coming into your workflows, you and you want to be a little bit more kind of open to, uh, to, to what data you are kind of gaining access to, then that is one particular option to you. I will probably more recommend that if you are working with a set of input data that is very kind of uh, very consistent and will always be the same is to always try to be a little bit more explicit with inside the triggers themselves because you can then work on the data types you know that you've got a string coming in you know you've got a number coming in and you can be a little bit more specific in that particular way and that will kind of help you throughout your workflows where you then don't need to make those kind of decisions for example is it a string is it a number is it the correct type so just Keep that in the back of your mind, um, but it's just one option that I just wanted to demonstrate for you. Okay, so in this very simple workflow, previously we've demonstrated the use of a post request where we're passing these values as part of the body, but how about an actual get request? What about where we apply a query string parameters on the actual URL that we're passing in instead of it being part of a body? Well, we can make some adjustments here. We can support that with inside build chip. So we go to the method. Let's change that to a get like that. Let's move back up here to the edit of the trigger. And you can see here, we've got this query, which represents, or this object will represent all all of the parameters that we're going to pass in as part of the query string. So with the query selected, let me quickly add the same ones in as we had before. Okay, so there we go. I've got number one in there. I've got number two. They are set explicitly as the type itself, two numbers and one string. Now, if I just save that, I can now move back over to our first number here. I can delete all of this out of here and I can go to variables. I can go to the request. I can go to the query and you can see I've got the number one there. So I'm just gonna quickly apply these here as well, like this. We go to the variables, go to request, go to the query and choose number two. And of course, I'm just gonna then do the operation itself, delete those out of there, request, query, and operation. Now, if I just simply now go to test, there's a slightly different setup here because instead of doing the body as we did before, we're gonna do the query itself. So let's just type these in here. So just as we did before, number one, I'm gonna subtract uh, number two from number one, hit test workflow. Okay, so like magic, it's providing us with exactly the same result. So that's just a very, very, very quick walkthrough on setting up parameters as far as using a get request con uh, concern. So we know that posts and gets with inside the uh, inside build ship as far as a trigger are the two most common that you're likely to do with inside your own projects.